Hi friends, it's Linda at the Flourishing Table. Oh, it's been a long time since we cooked together in my kitchen and I miss you all. Life is getting a little busier for all of us and I was having some uh, things going on. So I had planned on preparing something with you on Friday and then uh, my plans got changed. So it was for a good reason. And uh, so I, in any case, I hope I make it up to you today. So today is Wednesday and um, I like to make something easy on Wednesdays because usually it's a church day for us. So we'll be doing church online. And uh, you know, we've gotten into a nice routine of going bicycle riding before dinner or after dinner. Uh, but the weather is so bad. <laughs> It's raining a lot here in Florida. I don't know how it is by you, but um, so I'm keeping it really simple today. This is um, probably many of Italian grandma, Nona, uh, prepared this on a day that she just wanted to do something easy and delicious. So eggplant is one of my favorite vegetables. And I know most people are accustomed to eggplant parmesan, which is absolutely delicious. And you know, uh, it was a it was a go-to meal for my mom. And I loved eggplant leftover because in a sandwich, uh, it's just the best with crusty Italian bread. And um, actually, you can even use this the way we're going to prepare it. You can also use this. Um, uh, in a sandwich later on, but I'll explain a little bit. So we're making this, uh, I actually had it when I was in Tuscany at a Sicilian restaurant. So it is a Sicilian dish and it's go we're going to saute some eggplant, which I, I started already because I wanted to be a little bit ahead of the game. Hi Lisa. And um, so we're going to saute this eggplant that I cubed. I cut up and try to make it as you know, equal size, so it's uh, it's gonna cook more evenly. And we're gonna add to that some chopped tomatoes. Now, as far as tomatoes go, I use all different kinds, depending on my mood and what I have in the house. So I'm trying to use up as much of my pantry goods as I have, because I'll be heading to the mountains very soon. And I look forward to cooking there with you. So anyway, um, I always have a can of whole peeled Italian imported tomatoes. I like the San Marzano. They're very sweet and delicious, but um, they come packed in sauce. You see that tomato sauce? I'm actually going to reserve that. I'm not going to use the tomato sauce today because I'm just, I want this to have a very chunky texture. So what I did was I, I sauteed again my my eggplant, I'm gonna season it with garlic powder. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I was to cook this in the garlic, the garlic would get very brown and bitter by the time the eggplant was cooked. So eggplant is a peculiar little vegetable and you have to kind of brown it slowly and you're gonna add a little oil at a time because it's almost like a sponge and it soaks up the oil and sometimes if, again, you don't have that right ratio of um, oil and the, the vegetable, it's, it's not going to saute evenly. And we want it to get a nice golden brown. We want it to bring all the colors, all the flavors by caramelizing it. So instead of using whole garlic, crushed or sliced, I'm using garlic powder because that um, assures me to get the flavor of the garlic not garlic salt, garlic powder, without getting any of the burnt residue, which, like I said, because eggplant takes a long time to cook down, um, your garlic would probably be burned by the time you actually got it to the right color. I forgot my salt, hold on a second. So we're gonna season this with salt and you know, again, I never measure, but we have, just go around once will be sufficient. I like to use sea salt and I use that, I like, to, I like the control of this type of um, dispenser. Okay, so we have our eggplant. 
I have sauteed it with olive oil, E-V-O-O, -O, and I have seasoned it with garlic powder and salt. Now, I'm going to be adding other garlic to this dish, so again, you go around once, hey Leilani, and then you're going to eventually add more fresh garlic. Leilani, we're making eggplant with fresh mozzarella and tomatoes that I'm gonna actually serve instead of over pasta, which I love. Pasta's the best way to do this, but I'm trying to uh, have less gluten, so I'm serving it over spaghetti squash. And it's, I've had it before, it's absolutely delicious. So anybody who, you know, needs it to be a gluten-free meal, this is for you. So Leilani, we have sauteed the eggplant till it's nice and, see, caramelized, seasoned it with garlic powder and salt. And now I'm getting ready to add those tomatoes. Hi, Bonnie. So again, I used, um, I used a can of whole tomatoes that I cut up. I want, I want this to have a lot of texture, okay? So you can see the tomatoes here. Let me hold that up for you. All right, I, I purposely cut these tomatoes in nice chunks. I want there to be a lot of texture in this dish. Now, if you are not a texture person, that's okay. And you know, that's what I want to, you know, really inspire you to do it your way. You know, what you care for. Well, I gotta put my glasses on. <laughs> so we want to cook this on a medium high heat because we want it to come together quickly so that we don't cook all the flavors out of it, all right? And like I said, I prefer this to have a lot of texture, but you can, I also put on my counter just to show you, I still have my jar of sauce that I bought at the beginning of the quarantine. Um, I think I bought two jars. I used one for a couple of different things, uh, but I still have another one. So if you only have these tomatoes on hand, that's fine. I would use probably half a jar per eggplant, okay? Now my eggplant was a, a medium sized one. It's just for Phil and I. Um, my house is empty besides us right now, so, and there'll still be plenty left over from one eggplant. And as you can see, unfortunately you cannot smell the, the delicious aroma coming out of this. I'm going to actually add a little more salt. Because I added the tomatoes. Now I am going to use a little more olive oil in this, okay? This is not going to be a heavy sauce. It's going to be a light sauce. And I am actually going to put I kind of did this a little out of step. I'm going to put about a heavy teaspoon of crushed garlic that I pureed. You know, my, my famous garlic puree. I should have actually did that before I put my tomatoes in, but I'm so excited to see you. I got a little bit zealous, a little over excited. I want that garlic to brown a little bit. So I kind of put it in, a, in an area in the middle where it still has an opportunity to get caramelized. Again, you can use garlic powder for this uh, whole dish. You don't have to use fresh garlic if you don't have it, but you definitely want a nice, rich flavor of garlic, but not to the point where it's you know overpowering the meal, the dish. The other ingredient that we're going to put in here, you're not going to even believe how simple this is. So you saw, I started off with that sautéed eggplant. I had seasoned it with garlic powder and salt. Then I added the tomatoes, which I should have first sautéed more garlic in there, fresh garlic, but I made a mistake. So I added my fresh garlic to this mixture. And I'm going to sauté it until it really comes together. Hi! The camera is a little, the way I have it set up, it's a little far from me, so. Hello, Graziella. So I, see how I have that cooking now? It's just 
coming together beautifully. Now, if you need a little extra flavor here, if you want, again, a little more depth, you can use my favorite chicken uh, better than bouillon. You can add, if you want to thin out this gravy a little bit, make it a little lighter, you can put a half a cup um, of water with a teaspoon, a little less than a teaspoon of, of the bouillon. That bouillon is real salty. So as you can see, this is really coming together nice. Now, I have some chopped parsley from my from my garden. I am I'm still inundated with Italian parsley. My basil, on the other hand, is very weary because as the summer heats up here in Florida, the basil starts to fade. So I just um, I just have a little bit here that I'm I'm going to sprinkle around in, in nice chunks. I don't want it real, um, I, don't, I don't like my basil small. I like, I want to know it's there. I don't know how you feel about basil, but I absolutely love it. And it really changes the aroma of any dish. It's, a, it's got a, basil has a big personality and I love it. So um, while this is simmering, and I'm going to decide again with this, um, I think I'm going to put, I want you to take a good look at this. This is the consistency that we want. Now, we're going to be putting this over, like I said, spaghetti squash. So spaghetti squash is another fun little vegetable that um, what I did was, so picture two halves. This were, these were the smallest spaghetti squash I ever cooked. And I just put them in the oven really for a half an hour. Now, if you have a normal size spaghetti squash, you'd probably cook it at least 45 minutes. But what I do is I, it's like a pumpkin. So you wanna cut it in half. And this, they're really tough to cut. So make sure you have your knife pointed away from you on a good cutting board that's not gonna slip and slide. So you cut this squash in half and you're gonna see it looks just like a pumpkin on the inside. And I'll post some pictures that I took while I was preparing it. And then you're gonna scoop out with a spoon. You're gonna scoop out all the seeds, just like you would a pumpkin, exact same way. Then I put it on a cookie sheet with the other halves and I drizzle it with some olive oil, salt, seasoned with salt and garlic powder. So that, you know, they really don't have a tremendous amount of flavor, so we want to kind of start to build the flavor at that point of roasting it. So it really, you know, comes into itself. Okay, so now we have our little spaghetti squash that has been roasted, like I said, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And now I'm going to start to build my spaghetti. Can you see how easy that all comes together? It's really quite amazing okay and it looks <laughs> it looks just like spaghetti so what I did was like I said I'm trying to stay away from the gluten right now so I am um, I'm figuring one of those size spaghetti squashes one for me and one for Phil I don't know Phil may need a little Italian bread with this I'm not sure how he's gonna feel about it but but I think uh, his is a little bigger than mine so I think he'll be okay and now you can see, again, the colors of this eggplant. This is, this is exactly what you want it to look like. So I don't have to really add anything. But if you like a saucier sauce, if you want it to be a looser sauce, you can either use, again, a jarred sauce, or you can actually use crushed tomatoes that, you know, you can buy the same brand of tomatoes, San Marzano, you can use Cento makes them, Muir makes them, they're already crushed. And that's a great consistency too. That would be my next choice for this particular dish. The other, my favorite, favorite way to do this is when I'm in the mountains of North Carolina, I have an incredible community garden and we get our fill of heirloom tomatoes. So. 
in August, I'll probably be preparing this from my kitchen in North Carolina with those tomatoes. And what I do is I just chop them, very coarse chop, right off the vine and I saute them. You don't have to take the skins off. Oh, by the way, I did not take the skin off this eggplant. Um, you don't have to do that. I have to talk to you about eggplant. Wait one second. Let me finish this thought <laughs> before I spider web. So those heirloom tomatoes, I just cut up in nice coarse chop. I like bite-sized pieces, you know, I don't want to be cutting while I'm eating. And um, I would saute it just right off the vine with the garlic and the olive oil and, um, and then add my my eggplants and I actually get the most amazing eggplants in North Carolina also now let me tell you something about eggplants it's quite interesting I bet you don't know this fun fact eggplants are there's boys and there's girl eggplants and my mother taught me many years ago that when you're picking an eggplant you and I don't have an extra one I'm so sorry but I know when you go into the supermarket you'll know exactly what I'm talking about so you have the top of the eggplant where the stem is, right? You're gonna flip that eggplant and you're gonna look at its bottom. And on the bottom, it's either gonna have a round belly button, my mommy would call it, or it's gonna be an oblong shape. So which one do you think is the girl and which one do you think is the boy? <laughs> well, the theory is that the girl eggplants are gonna have a lot more seeds. Doesn't that make sense? So the boys barely have any seeds. They're the better choice, if you have a choice. I did not have a choice with these eggplants. They were only female eggplants. So the bottom, when I flipped it, was a little round belly button. The males is more of an oblong shape. So, just so you know, if you have a choice, pick the boy eggplant. That's one fun fact. Now, the eggplants, depending on the variety, because, you know, eggplants come in so many different varieties now. In North Carolina, I, and some of you have looked on my Bella page, um, I have these extraordinary white and purple eggplants. They look like they're paintbrush. They're beautiful. And the skin is sweet. There's no issue with it whatsoever. Some people are really don't care for the skin. I did not peel, this was a traditional Italian eggplant, I did not peel it. Because of the way I cooked it, it's fine. Again, I like textures. Now, if you would prefer, you can peel this eggplant if you, if you would rather that way. Some people even soak their eggplants for an hour or so in milk or water to take out any bitterness. My mom never, ever did that. And I can't remember eating an eggplant that I didn't like. So. That is a personal preference. Preference You can go online and Google that information about eggplants. But like I said, if you have a choice, stay away from the girl eggplants and go to the boy ones because they won't have the seeds and um, there was something sweeter about, that, about them because of that. Okay, so what my next intention is, I'm going to, my husband's not home yet, we're gonna be eating when he gets in, but I would be serving it and I'll make you a I'll make you a uh, setup here, okay? So I have my my spaghetti squash. I'm just gonna finish creating the spaghetti in it. You know, you just want to go all the way really to the skin. You want to get as much of that pulp into that spaghetti-like fiber because you really, if you're somebody that's trying to stay away from the gluten or carbs. You will find this very satisfying. I think I, uh, while well, I was at my daughter's house, I posted that I prepared um, uh, meatballs with this and the kids absolutely loved it. Now, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a nice heaping, probably a couple of heaping spoonfuls of this eggplant. You see that? Okay. And like I said, if you want this to be a more runny type of sauce, that's fine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to top it with some delicious fresh mozzarella. Now, you can put this in the oven 
and let that ooze onto your, your eggplant and your spaghetti squash, okay? I would also take some additional basil and just sprinkle a little more because, you know, the basil, again, when it's cooked, it kind of gets all mushy and it, it a little bit evaporates. I, I like my basil present. Okay, so let me show you that again. And then you can just serve it, again, depending on your taste, with some grated cheese. So I'm going to pop that in the oven for not even five minutes and let that get all nice and ooey and gooey. So um, that's it. That's my known as pasta. Now, if you would like, tomorrow if you have some left over, um, I wouldn't put it on top of the, all the spaghetti squash. I would reserve it in a separate container. You can put that on some garlic toast with some more fresh mozzarella and basil and have yourself the best sandwich ever. I know you would love that. You can eat it just as it is. You can put this over farro. You can put it over, again, any pasta. Um, that's my favorite way. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> And um, you could really put it on any type of grain that you enjoy. So I want to give you a verse. You know, we're in crazy times. Every time we think that life has really spun out of control. And, and we can't, I was, um, I was ministering to a young woman today. And I just said to her, you're like a little ballerina that's just spinning and you've lost your center. That's all of us. We're all kind of in that place. It's the things that we may have um, in our life given us a sense of security or stability, maybe you feel has been taken away. And in this time of uncertainty, you know, fear and stress, uh, it can cause havoc. So I'm having some health issues and they're all related to stress. And it's not stress from the corona, but you know what? The coronavirus doesn't doesn't help for sure and even though I think if you know me well enough and you've seen me on the flourishing table you know I have the joy of the Lord I don't live in fear I but you know what our bodies still absorb the stress around us whether we like it or not and we can pray against that and stand firm on God's protection and allow him to be our refuge in times of trouble and that will bring us back to stability even if we have those moments of you know high emotion or maybe even doubt. Maybe you're doubting the presence of God when we see so much hate and violence. I was reading in uh, the Gospels today and you know it says actually in Luke chapter 21, it says that in the last days families will turn on each other and you know what? I've experienced that. There are differences of opinions. We, we have a perspective that not everybody shares. That's really hard when you love these people, but yet we're not maybe like-minded. And we have to stop trying to convince people that they need to agree or believe what we believe. It's not going to happen. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is the only one that can convict us. We can pray for those we love that don't get it or don't maybe. And Lord, if I'm wrong, I'm not perfect, but then show me I'm wrong. Convince me. Confirm that my perspective needs to be adjusted you know God does that he's you know just because we love Jesus doesn't mean we have it all right all the time so be honest be humble be moldable be teachable but again understand that in these times um, there will be confusion there will be um, you know there's this upside down what God values and what the world values it's not the same it's not the same and we have to kind of understand that we're pilgrims that are on a journey. This is not our home. And if, and if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by that, that what is happening in this world, has everybody lost their mind? They've lost their center. Or they, maybe they never had one. I feel that a lot of, of the violence and the hate is really driven by people who do not have a center in Christ. They have maybe lived apart from God for so long, or maybe they're so wounded um, and hurt by their their circumstances that they have been blinded. You know, 
the enemy deceives those who are not walking with Christ. And you know, we know what that looks like. If you're if you're saved, if you're if you know Jesus, you know there were times in your life where you were blind. You did not see that's that beautiful. I was once blind and now I see. So we can never judge someone because they don't believe the way we believe. We have to pray for them. But we also need to guard our hearts and our minds because conflict will make us sick. So we have to be really intentional about guarding our hearts and maybe keeping a distance from some people that are very toxic or maybe very hateful or even maybe very fearful because fear is contagious. That's why we're seeing um, such chaos from the COVID now multiplied by hate and anger. And um, again, God's people should be united in what he loves. We should be united in him. He is not a divided house. He says that any home divided will fall. Our nation is very divided now. And we have to continue to pray and believe that God, although he's allowing our lives to be disrupted, he still has authority over this. He can step in at any moment and say, enough is enough. But for whatever reason, he is humbling our nation and we need to pause and, and understand that he still is present. He still loves us. So this is the verse that I was praying. What can I give you to encourage you? What can I give you to encourage me? Because <laughs> we're all in this together. So it is John chapter 16, verse 33. In this world, there will be trouble. But take heart, my sweet friends. I, Jesus, have come overcome the world, and you will too. So we have hope in the Lord. He is an anchor to our soul. He is our center when things around us are unstable. So I pray that you will enjoy a delicious meal of eggplant with fresh mozzarella or with spaghetti squash and tomatoes, some fresh basil and grated cheese. Um, and you will maybe find just rest for your soul in that moment. Not that food is supposed to be what brings us peace. That's Jesus. He is our peace and our joy uh, and our comfort. But food is a way to just kind of take a break from what's around us and have fellowship with someone you love. So I hope you are well. I pray that you are safe and healthy and try to limit the outside chaos from your sanctuary, your home. God bless you. Love you all.